Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Mel and I am an indie dyer living on the Orkney Islands off the north coast of Scotland. And normally I have a podcast and this is not a typical podcast episode. This is an episode talking about my experiences of Perth Festival of Yarn 2022 and my yarn haul for basically what I bought whilst I was there, which was more than I had planned. But uh, let's just say it'll be keeping me going for quite some time. Normally I don't have a drink whilst I'm recording. A lot of podcasters do, but I actually do this time. And I'm going to show it because when I was at Perth, uh, my first purchase and apologies if the camera shakes my cat is pushing on the tripod here um my first purchase wasn't actually yarn and because i'm thirsty i'm going to show it before i actually start talking about perth itself and it was this fabulous mug from emily cross ceramics and it is beautiful i fell in love with her uh work Bef when as soon as I found out she was coming to yarn, uh, Perth Yarn Festival and um, she does these beautiful yarn bowls with different types of glazes including this one which she calls, calls her nebula glaze and I love them but I don't really use a yarn, I, I don't think I would use a yarn bowl um, because I usually keep the yarn in the project bag on which I'm working but she also did the books so this I planned to buy. This was actually a planned purchase from Perth and I love it. It's got this like black and purple and blue glaze to it which is absolutely stunning and this was my first purchase at the festival. I knew I would, well I didn't go straight to her stall but as soon as I walked past it I planned to buy it even on the first work walk around at Perth and it's a lovely big size I can really kind of hug it and I can get all three fingers and kind of like hug it it's just perfect and she did say when you know pick up all the mugs and find out which one feels right in your hand this was the first one I actually picked up and I was just drawn to it and I, I love that it's kind of like um it almost looks like it's got kind of a mountainous night sky scene going on in the glaze here and I did try the other mugs as well but I grabbed it came straight back to the first one afterwards and yeah so this was my first purchase and I'm showing this because I'm quite thirsty so I'm about to take a drink I have not got some fancy tea I have got um fancy coffee instead <laughs> um I have oat milk latte because I can't drink can't consume too much dairy and I have thrown some maple syrup in here so and a little pinch of salt really nice and uh, yeah so that is my keep me going whilst I'm talking on this video or drink so yes Perth I'm going to be putting a separate video up of my trip and full vendor walk around of Perth Festival of Yarn that will be a separate video it should have gone up last night but I went to bed and forgot to set away the upload because we have super slow internet here we don't have fiber broadband we are out in the sticks so it takes several hours to upload a video but it will be up in the next few days so Perth I traveled down to Perth on the overnight ferry and then caught a train into Perth on the Thursday morning before the festival which take pl takes place on the Saturday and the Sunday and it was it was not it was a funny cross it was rough I had taken seasickness tablets because um, I've made that mistake of not taking them before and it took a while to go to sleep the ferry was rocking and rolling a fair amount and I thought perhaps I was going to get thrown out of my bed but eventually it calmed down and I did get to sleep not a lot of sleep mind but I did get a few hours sleep and then the train into Perth as we were approaching Perth Scotland was getting torrential rain, especially Perthshire, and the last couple of miles into Perth took a long time. We went in there to crawl, and the land surrounding was completely flooded. But got into Perth, it was great. 
Before I carry on with that story, I should probably show you some yarn because if you're here for the yarn, all I'm going to be talking about is getting there. So I shall show you show the yarn. This yarn, I am going to be caking up pretty much as soon as I finish recording this. The only reason it's in the skin is because I wanted to record this video first. And this is from Marcus of Fiber Punk, and it is a Halloween self striping sock yarn called Alpha Bars Knickers and it is a 7525 superwash merino nylon and I know I've said on previous podcast episodes that I prefer not to knit socks in merino but I made an exception for this because just look at those colours that is gorgeous and like I said it's not even variegated it is a self striping yarn and yeah I just ah, I have a weakness for Halloween striping yarns I made a pair of hand spun socks very similar self striping colours before um, but they didn't last five minutes because half the fibres were mystery fibres and they were not up to walking on so I'm looking forward to having these so I I'm going to be knitting a pair of socks that was not on my autumn knitting plans Vanilla Socks Halloween colorway. First yarn purchase. Yeah, so it was a journey to get to Perth. Walking from the train station, I had a huge suitcase. One of those wheelie ones, the four trolleys that you're supposed to be push alongside you. But the footpaths in Perth are very uneven. So I was having to kind of lift it quite a lot of the time because I was worried one of the wheels would get knocked off and then I would be really stumped because it would be too heavy, especially coming on with like yarn purchases too. But I got there and I got to my Airbnb that I had booked. It was a lovely Airbnb and really enjoyed it there. It was really perfect. It was just perfect. It was right in the centre of Perth. It was practically next door to where the Saturday night evening event would be taking place. So that was perfect. I didn't have to worry about walking around Perth very far on my own as a woman on their own. So it was, Perth's probably fine, but you know, I'm not used to um, the city anymore. We've been living up on Orkney for, oh, uh, 13 years, something like that. So yeah, it was perfect. And I basically spent the rest of Thursday afternoon going around doing some shopping getting some food being able to do all the things that I can't do living on islands going to the, all the different shops and places that I can't can't normally do as well Friday obviously it was no Perth day as well and my sister and her partner uh, my sister Charlotte and her partner Stuart were coming down off the island the previous night on the other overnight ferry in their overlander off-road camper van and they're heading south and they'll be heading off um from the uk um i think it's next week they head over the water and they'll be going away to italy for three months before going on to turkey i think but i'm not 100 percent sure that they finalized their plans for after italy so they happened to be passing through perth that day so they parked found somewhere to park and they met up with with Charlotte and Stuart for a couple of hours just just pottering going to a couple of shops they needed to go to some shops on the mainland I needed to go to some bits and pieces too so yeah I had a, a couple of very brief hours to see them before I probably won't see our Charlotte for oh at le well at least six months while they're away and possibly longer than that so yes yeah, so, and it was a, another kind of a shopping sort of regular sort of a day and that brings us up to Perth Yarn Festival, Perth Festival of Yarn on Saturday. So, yeah, Perth Yarn Festival. I love Perth Yarn Festival. I don't have a lot of experience with other yarn festivals, but comparing it to say Edinburgh Yarn Festival, I found Edinburgh when it was still running to be very um, claustrophobic. I would say it was very large and there's a lot of stall holders but there's also a lot of people and it feels like quite a dark building inside and um, it just feels quite enclosed and quite overwhelming. Um, 
whereas Perth it's much more open and airy and it's light and it's bright and there's much more room to move around between the stalls and uh, yeah and if, if it, it gets a little bit too crowded you just need to move back a bit and you've got plenty of space and there's plenty of seating and uh, it's a really enjoyable festival to go to and it's not frantic or um, which is kind of what I felt when I've been at Edinburgh um so yeah so this year i wasn't vending i was just going there as a podcaster and a purchaser which was really nice there wasn't that kind of stress and headache so i did my first walk around and i bought my mug which i'm still drinking my coffee and i bought my sock yarn and i did a full walk around and a few things caught my eye but i was kind of I wanted to do a full walk and I wasn't sure what I was looking for. I had a couple, well, I had a list with lots of things that I was potentially looking for. Um, I got some of the pieces off of it, so like the mug. And um, I was looking for some particular coloured yarns and yarns for different projects. So I did go there mostly looking for sweater quantities of yarn rather than random skeins of sock yarn which I had done in the past or say twin skeins for shawls although I have bought shawl yarn as well and I've managed to combine dyers that I was wanting to buy from with um, projects that I was looking to buy yarn for. Uh, one prime example of that is I was looking for some yarn for a shawl called the Phobia Shawl by um, Nordic Stitches. She's only just started reselling her patterns. I don't think they're on Ravelry, I think they're on her website. And I will try and remember to put the links down below, in the box down below on the YouTube channel. So the Phobia Shawl I have had um, in my library for a few years since she I don't think it was when she just released it, but it wasn't that long after. It was when she was very active with um, knitting patterns. And it is a shawl that has, um, it's a triangular shawl and it has two colours in the design. Though they're very similar. I didn't actually realise at first, at first glance, that there were two colours until I really started looking at the pattern and realised it has bands of different colours. And what she has used is like a black and a really dark grey. So I was looking for something similar and I was also wanting to buy some of the Alpaca Rose Blend from Border Mill Yarns which is a 50% alpaca, 50% rose fibre yarn and I managed to do that. So I got three skins, oh they are showing up quite well on camera and they are, I think they're the same colour actually, 22, 22, no they're not the same colour. Um, the darkest one here is onyx and the slightly lighter one which is a dark grey i don't think it has a number a name it has a number which is 2222 so it must be a batch number and i had looked at the pattern online and there is slightly less of one color than the other there was only one of this particular dye batch so i got one of the darkest and two of the slightly lighter sometimes they don't look very different and then other times they look very different in colour depending upon the way the light shines on it because this blend has sheen it has quite a bit of sheen to the yarn but it is beautiful and it is very very soft it's going to be uh lovely to wear around the neck as a shawl so that was a purchase that i managed to combine two things on my list which is fabulous they actually came quite late to buy and I think I bought them on the Sunday rather than the Saturday the Saturday I don't think I bought a huge amount I think quite a bit of it was on the Sunday um the one purchase I did make on Saturday I have all my yarn down here the one purchase I did make on Saturday was when I was doing my walk around um I came to a stall by Nervous Fibre and she had a number of uh, samples knit up. Quite a lot of them I really really liked and um, 
One of them was for a design which hadn't really been on my radar to knit with, to knit rather. And I thought it was kind of a, wasn't really me. And I had seen somebody else's project and thought it looked really nice, but again, I wasn't convinced. But her sample was lovely. And it was the Stripes pattern by Andrea Mari. And she had knit, or somebody else had knit, but the sample was knit in one of her bases with four of her colorways in a alpaca silk cashmere alpaca silk cashmere blend i think um so i just fell in love with it it was super soft super lightweight and just beautiful she actually had sold out of one of the colors so i have got three of the colors and i have a fourth one on order um which is a kind of a dark gold colour or kind of like a um like a a muted gold I should say colour that goes with these three skeins because it looked absolutely beautiful and I seem to have bought an awful lot of alpaca and um yak. There's lots of the um hang on let me think. Is an alpaca a camelid? Is he, well, a yak isn't no because me and my mum were having this discussion and for some reason I had it in my head that the yak was like an alpaca obviously a yak is nothing like an alpaca but for some reason with the brain fog and the medication that I'm on and just like I don't know I had it in my head so no yak is a cow well it's not a cow but it's 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 a buffalo family type animal so I bought a lot of yarn that was not sheep that's the one. I bought a lot of yarn that was not sheep based. So yes, this is alpaca silk and I'm pretty sure alpaca silk cashmere, if I remember rightly. I don't think it's alpaca merino silk um, because she hasn't got the label. She had to label these there and then. She was, um, I think, a little rushed off her feet and a little overwhelmed at how many people were buying her yarn. So she was having to label as she went. So yes, I have a, a muted gold to go with these. Now, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to make the striped sweater with these. I can, because I will have enough yarn for it. I might still make it, but my reluctance stems from the fact that it is a round yoked sweater. And I have quite a few round yoked sweaters, but honestly, I think I prefer a raglan like this. I am wearing my Salem sweater, and it's not gonna show very well, but it is actually a raglan. And I think I prefer a raglan um, the shape of a raglan over a, uh, a round neck yoke. Round neck yokes are great for collar work, but if I have the option, I don't know. So I might make a striped raglan. I could do a striped version of this actually. This is just a raglan. But without the, um, the cable work down the side. I might do that, you know, and do a raglan version. So yes, that was probably my only purchase that I actually made on the Saturday. We had a podcaster meetup upstairs um, uh, in the afternoon, about two o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, yeah, it was a great first day. There was lots of lovely stall holders, a good variety of stalls selling not just yarns, there was um, fibre and there was um, felt backed fleece throws and rugs which I was I would have loved to have bought but I just I couldn't there's no way I could carry it well I could have but I'd have really really struggled um I was very very tempted with some um of the rugs that were uh, really really tightly curled I can't remember um what type of fleece they were now I'll try and find out and put it up on the screen. Um, but if not, they were just really tight little curls and they were lovely. To, they were just very tactile. And I can't remember the name of the lady that does it. But again, I will try and remember to put it up on the screen and put the links down. Um, but they're not like a sheepskin where you would have you would have the skin on the back like from a dead animal and then the, the fur... Well, fibre the fleece on the top um what she does is she takes a sheared fleece which is obviously off a live animal and then uses other fibre to felt the back um where you would have the skin of a sheepskin rug and then you have 
the fleece from a live animal and an animal hasn't had to die for the sheepskin they're lovely it's something i've actually considered myself i have some fleeces upstairs i have a lot of fleeces upstairs i have a lot of north ronald's say and um although some a lot of it's been washed i do have an unwashed north ronald's fleece that i'm very tempted to do something very similar i had looked up how to do it a while back um but it's one of those things where you have to I just I just haven't had time basically so but her fleece is absolutely beautiful and you don't have to wash them or do all that malarkey yourself she's already got all the gear which is brilliant so I'm very tempted to order one from her at some point in the future I think she only has a Facebook page um, but again I will link it if I can find that there was also um, uh, a, a, a vendor that where you could buy little sample bags like little paper sample bags of um fiber from various animal or various sheep rather um which again i was very tempted with i just i went over and i'm like oh that's interesting like feeling the little bits and then, then i could i was like oh i smell like sheep now i feel completely at home that sheepy smell um so yes there was those and there was also washed small bats that you could buy too there was somebody i think Celia mcwheelie so yes, Celia McWheelie was also selling um, uh, like art bats. There was Beady Cheel who had some beautiful alpaca yarn that I nearly bought. Again, alpaca rose yarn in a gorgeous um, like a charcoal, like a like a tweedy charcoal colour, but also in a beautiful light pale caramel colour. It was just beautiful. But I was struggling to kind of pair yarns that i was thinking about purchasing with projects i didn't want to like just buy stuff even if i fell in love with it if i didn't have something in mind and i just couldn't figure out how much yardage i would need for what project and i had to i was i'd already bought quite a bit of yarn at that point and i didn't want to overload myself and because beady chill is just over the water from me as well it's not hard for me to get um his yarns or his fibres because he just lives like along the road from where my mum lives so <laughs> that's fairly easy to get hold of so I kind of held fire with that but he was there and he had his little bells in his beard as usual as well which was fab um we had Joe's toes with all the felt pieces where you could have slippers and stuff made up or the pieces and f to make handmade slippers out of felt and things like that yeah there was just so much variety and there was something there for everybody and it was just brilliant yes so it was a great shopping day it was a great experience on day one friday night this was and went out some food with some of the other people and it was a really nice place we went to um i mean excuse my pronunciation but is it kokoshi not entirely sure but it's the japanese restaurant in perth and i had a fabulous bowl of ramen and i am going to have to seriously up my homemade ramen game because it was i mean mine is good but that was really good and had my first warm sake which was an experience and nicer than i was expecting i actually quite enjoyed it i didn't think i would like it at all so yes that was day one of the festival which brings me to day two which is when really the purchases start to flow well, I say that, doesn't it? I'm sure people went home with a lot more than I did. So Sunday, day two, and a little bit more relaxed. People came in instead of the big mad rush at like 10 o'clock on the Saturday. People came through a little more steadily through Sunday, which was great. Great for the vendors and also a good experience as somebody who was going around the festival too. It meant it was a bit more relaxed and it was just... I don't know it was just it was just really really pleasant there was another podcaster meetup on the morning i believe around 11 a.m 11 and that was lovely too and instead of it just kind of been hanging out we actually a bunch of us had to sit down properly and did some knitting and it was just much more relaxed and it was lovely so i got to meet again some more of the lovely podcasters and um a, co a couple of the viewers as well which was really really nice I am getting myself completely confused. 
the Friday night was the Japanese night. The Saturday was the gala night, but also I did actually go to one of the talks on the Saturday afternoon too, which was, and I've got my phone here to try and remember, Estelle Hughes, who was doing a talk on radical knitting, which I'm going to really struggle with the pronunciation, is Honsestrick, which is completely wrong, but you know, but it's colour work and it's kind of colour work breaking from the traditional and it stems from, um, let me find out. Yes, it was a knitting style originated in the 1970s in Denmark as a form of feminism and anti-capitalist protest. So it's colour work with lots of it's just you could put anything in it and colours and it was just it was a really interesting talk and it's really inspired me to do a second full-on colour work sweater or cardigan because I plan on doing a completely Shetland um all of colour work cardigan in Fair Isle and it's also but this talk inspired me to do a second colour work garment in um this sort of style with different colours and probably different yarns as well. The gala dinner was on the Saturday night at the Royal George Hotel and we had a meal and we also had music by again I'm having to look at my phone here <laughs> by and we had music by Ruth Martin and they were absolute the music was just brilliant and the performance was great and I'm going to look her up on um the internet because her music was really really good I really enjoyed especially some of the stuff that she'd written herself as well so the Sunday purchases purchases hmm sweater quantities of purchases let's start with hmm I know what we'll start with um oh this one's come untwisted right I was looking for yarn in a specific color and I came pretty close the thing was there was only two skeins of this yarn so I've had to rethink my plan and the, that is this yarn right there is this yarn which is a beautiful coppery colored yarn and this yarn is from Iole Yarns and it is in a 70% baby, baby alpaca, 20% silk, 20% cashmere. I suspect this is the same base as the yarn from Nervous Fibres. Because it is a cashmere silk alpaca. But there was only two skins of this colourway left. So there was another yarn in a similar colour but a lighter colour. I'm out of focus but don't worry. Um, oh, we've got a tag in the way. If I show you those three together, it's so soft and floppity that I can't hold it. So you can see the bottom two is a little bit dark. The top one is lighter than the bottom two. So I have a cunning plan. And what I plan to do is I'm going to make something like a cardigan. Yes, a cardigan. I just don't think it would work with a sweater. And I am going to stripe the two different shades in the body of the garment probably sort of like finger width sort of stripes and with the extra skin the second skin of the darker colour I will do all of the rib so that's the collar cuffs bottom band button band the whole lot will be done in the darker one and then just these two striped in the body and I think that will look really really nice I was looking for some of this coppery colour for a sweater but to be perfectly honest I do actually wear cardigans more than I wear sweaters simply because in the house I'm more likely to wear a cardigan and I'm at home more than I'm actually out of the house when I go into town I'm more likely to put like my Salem sweater or my Svag on or something like that but less so when I'm actually in the house so sweater quantities I I love the yarns by Edelweiss Yarns and she had a beautiful um, sample knit up in I think five of her colourways and she had the colourways that she'd used with the display it was I have no idea what the sweater was called but it had wide stripes of five uh, four colours 
and then it had like a thin kind of a zigzaggy line in between each stripe in a darker color and it looked lovely it was kind of shades of like um pale gold and greens and speckled yarns and such like and there's a a funny story behind that but would that's a kind of a personal story but um yeah i loved it and i was very very tempted to buy the yarns for that but she'd actually sold out of um one of the greens um so i was, wasn't sure what to do i thought i could use one of my own but it would be a different base and i was just i wasn't sure so i opened an order i was actually on a stall for ages trying to decide but i had fell in love with a couple of our other yarns as well and they are not well yeah I've, i'm wearing a sweater with sparkle in it i mean it doesn't really show up on camera but it actually does have um sparkle in this sweater i'm not sure if it'll show if i you can ju kind of just see it hasn't got a lot because it's held double with a unsparkly alpaca yarn but uh i fell in love with two of her sparkle yarns so the first one is just it makes me think of christmas cards it is this yarn which i was going to press on the lens there to get it focused instead of my screen um it is this beautiful white base and it's come out really really white the base because yarn bases are not naturally white white when you first get them and um with these shades of green and teal and little bits of gold where the yarn has broken and it is a silver sparkle base and i saw this and i was like oh my god that's so nice so yeah so i fell in love with this one but i also fell in love with one of the other sparkle yarns which is this one which is a purple and kind of like a khaki green um on a sparkle base and this is a is it silver sparkle yeah a silver sparkle base but where the silver sparkle is on where the purple has hit the silver sparkle i'm really going to struggle to show this um this yeah it's not really going to show but the sparkle is actually dyed purple now i've never had this happen when i have been dyeing purple sparkle yarns although i think i've only done my natural dyes on sparkle yarn rather than my acid dyes um but I absolutely loved it. It just like it fascinates me that it's like the, the sparkle has gone purple in places. And but I couldn't decide between the two. And I didn't want to knit socks. And I also didn't really want to knit shawls, although I have the option because I was so indecisive. I ended up buying two skeins of each. <laughs> so what my plan is either so I don't know what to do is I have two skins of each so I have options here I can either knit a shawl well from either of the pairs I'll keep the pairs separately okay so I can either knit I have enough to knit a shawl of either I also have enough I think to knit a ranunculus or a love note cropped short sleeve version of a love note sweater again with one or either like a ranunculus love note shawl ranunculus that sort of thing i haven't decided yet but i have options because i have two skins of each and uh, yeah that i think would look really nice as a love note sweater or a ranunculus they're pretty they're very very similar you know um this one I'm so tempted to knit a shawl, but I don't wear my shawls that often. And I feel like it won't get enough use. It's such a beautiful yarn. It's going to make whatever I make absolutely beautiful. It's either going to be a beautiful shawl, which will only get worn in like December, January, because it's very wintry, or it's going to make a stunning Christmas <laughs> sweater. I don't know. But uh, yeah, they're both 75 merino 15% nylon 10% stellina so that was an impulse buy these ones with impulse buys and that brings me to my last purchase of Sunday this was again and well it was it was an impulse buy in the fact that it wasn't actually um yarn that was on my shopping list but it wasn't just kind of like oh my god that silver sparkle I must have it sort of thing and it was three skeins and it was very close to the end of Sunday. But this is a sweater quantity again. 
three skeins of this yarn, which is very, very me. I'll try and get to get them to show on the camera. Oh, and yes, they are from Ginger Twist Studios because the label just went in the way. And it is a semi that's my finger. A semi solid dark red yarn, which is blowing out a little on camera. It is darker in person. It is looking very light there. But it kind of shows the ver the, the various shades in it but it is more like that color in real life it is quite dark and these are from ginger twist studios um i did say that these were from edelweiss yarns didn't i yeah there they are Edelweiss focus edelweiss fibers rather and these ones are from ginger twist studios and it is the colorway toffee apple. Oh, I didn't say, oh, I am being a really bad video editor. The silver spark with the green is mountains. And the, this one is called hillside heather. And the coppery ones, we've got, uh, it doesn't actually have colors, they're dialogues and i think i've shown a thing the other colors from nervous fibers i don't know the names for these ones are called toffee apple that that's the color is it just there just there is the color they're toffee apple and they are 60 percent superwash merino 20 percent yak and 20 percent silk which is what i was saying about all i've bought is alpaca and yak but that's actually not true because they're merino but it feels like Everything I was kind of gravitating towards was yak or alpaca or something along those lines. I was just like, ooh, ooh. There was some other yarn from, um, who was it? Was it Dina's Home of Crafts? No, what, there was some on Dina's Home of Crafts I really liked. And there was some on, was it Ducky Darlings? And yak base that I really liked in a gold colour, I think um so yes i bought three skeins of this i think the yardage is fairly good um yeah 400 yards per skein so i have enough to knit some sort of garment um either a short-ish garment with long sleeves or a longer garment with short sleeves because for my body size i need usually around 350 grams for both <laughs> if i want long sleeves or a long body um my spike i think took 350 330 grams maybe but that's kind of like um hip length as opposed to kind of waist not waist length but you know hip crease the swag was a little bit longer so i could probably do 300 grams but it will be a little bit shorter which is fine because i like a cropped sweater or cropped cardigan too so three skins should be plenty um to make some sort of garment I don't know what yet but it will be enough to make some sort of garment and the right garment will come along even if it's just another Salem or um, maybe even a one colour spy or something like that. I don't know yet. So yes, I bought those two. The Sunday night I was supposed to be going out again that night with some of the other people from the festival but it came to it got closer and closer to the time I was supposed to go out and I was so exhausted I was tripping over and stumbling around my airbnb knackered and I had to pack to leave early the next morning and there was just no way I was going to be able to go out for a meal and have dinner I could I was so tired I could barely eat that night I nibbled on like nuts and chocolate and bits and pieces because I was just so tired I just couldn't bring myself to eat a dinner or a meal even in the apartment so yes I packed up all my gear packed up all my yarns managed to get everything in my suitcase and my satchel and even though my suitcase weighed a ton and my satchel weighed a ton but I managed and it did take me a good couple of hours to pack so I'm glad I actually packed the night before because the next day I had choices I could either leave, uh, God, I can't talk now, I could either, not either, I could either leave first thing on the morning and catch the 10 to 10 train or I could leave a little bit later in the day 
and catch a lit train because I needed to make a connection in Inverness and I hadn't quite decided what to do. My plan was to catch the um, the service bus, the X99, um, up to Caithness um, to stay at my mum's overnight. That was the current plan. I could catch the earlier one and get there at tea time or I could catch the later one but it would get there at sort of 10 past 8 at night and I was only staying at my mum's for one night. So I really wanted to catch the morning train. So I managed to get up, I got myself sorted, packed, breakfast, Airbnb straightened up because I have an Airbnb and it's wonderful when you get to the Airbnb and it looks like nobody's been there. So yeah, <laughs> it looked like nobody had been there when I left. And uh, yeah, headed off to catch the train and I was struggling because my suitcase was heavier. I was exhausted. I hadn't slept very well. I'd kept waking up and um, I was in quite a bit of pain and I got to the train <laughs> I got to the train and I'm hurrying to the train and I got rushing to the train and I got to the train and I rushed onto the train and the train left in less than a minute after I boarded that train. I was still stood in the little foyer area where you get on trying to catch my breath and the sweat pouring off me and looking like I just run a marathon but I got on that train with less than a minute so I swear it was only 30 seconds after I got on that train that we actually departed so yeah um, I caught it which was good and I took some footage and so yeah I love Persia but as soon as we hit the highlands I was just like oh. my heart is in the highlands it always has been I grew up in the north of England so we always holidayed in either the Lake District or Scotland when I was a kid and there's just something about the highlands it's just like and the train it kind of follows to a certain degree the the um the year nine which runs up through um the cairngorms so in the highlands you've kind of got a cairngorms area which is um if you're not from if you don't know scotland very well you, you, lots of people have heard of balmoral balmoral is kind of on the like in the cairngorms or on the edge of the cairngorms and the cairngorms are i'm have to do this reverse it's kind of like the east like, this is the highlands you've got Cairngorms is this half, kind of. I'm simplifying. And then off this half, you've got areas like um, Glencore, um, which are different. And the landscape's slightly different in both. The both are the highlands, but like Cairngorms, I would say the mountains are kind of more, more like shallow and rounded. And then over the west side, they're a little bit kind of taller and pointier and a bit more rugged. Um, but it doesn't really matter which side I'm in. I'm just like. The Highlands are just, oh, I just love it. So I spent a lot of time just staring out the window <laughs> and uh, yeah. So I arrived in Inverness, but en route, I was like, I don't really want to catch the bus. No, the bus is great, but I have a, had a lot of luggage. I had my huge suitcase and I had my laptop in there as well. And I was worried about it just being kind of chucked in the bottom of the bus and I had my satchel and it was just a lot of luggage to catch like a service bus. So then I'm on my mum before and checking out the price of um, how much it was on the service bus and how much that compared to catching a train because I my train ticket up to Inverness had been an open all day ticket and so I didn't matter what time I'd arrived which one I'd caught to Inverness. So I then looked up the price of a ticket up to um, Caithness from Inverness and there wasn't a huge amount of difference in price. It was like, excellent. Was there space? Yeah, plenty. Awesome. So I decided last minute, pretty much as I was coming into Inverness really, to message mum and say I'd caught the earlier train, but I was going to be catching a train, so she needed to pick me up at a different place, um, up to Caithness. So I got to Caithness, the Inverness bus train station, bought my ticket, brilliant, got some had coffee and they're very relaxed, got on the next train got up to mum's great we had a night early night fortunately because I was very very tired and um yes yeah, spent the next day with mum did some jobs for her caught the ferry on the evening back home and back home again and there we are there we are my tale is mostly told I'm sure I've forgotten lots and lots of things I've been back from Perth now for a week and a half because I arrived home on the Tuesday night after Perth so what's that the 14 something like that the next day I had um, an 
appointment with my neurologist so busy 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 day after that we had to go to the airbnb because we'd had guests leave so we had to go do that and it's just been kind of frantic so at the end of last week i decided i need a week of taking like a halving my workload and this is also on my neurologist orders really is to scale everything back a bit so doctor's orders i um i would say i took a week off but i haven't because i've kind of been working but i've not been doing as much as i would normally do so that is why this video has taken this long to record i needed a break <laughs> basically because my body is broken and it needed a break that wasn't forced upon it so yeah i am finally here i'm finally back to recording and this video should go live i should be putting it overnight uploading overnight so hopefully it'll be live tomorrow and after that we have the walk around vendor tour video coming up as well which isn't any talking on it it is just a tour of me getting getting there and my journey and my all the vendors i try to record all the vendor stalls i don't think i missed anybody i think i got everybody on there and yep that should be going live in a couple of days and then another couple of week or two and i will be back with a regular podcast episode because i have a finished object already to show although they are only socks i have my arboreal sweater which is i would say three quarter two thirds completed i'm on the second sleeve and most of the body is knit and i have my shawl my um humble bee shawl oh that reminds me at the gala on the saturday i met some lovely ladies who were from denmark they had a big tour of them i think there was around two dozen ladies came over from denmark um to come to the festival and on the gala night i was sat with a big proportion of them which was great we had these huge tables I had a Canadian lady sat next to me and the rest of the tables were these Danish ladies and it was a good evening it was very entertaining so hi to you I know one of you like commented on one of my previous videos so hi I am going to reply to you um when I'm on the YouTube channel doing my bits and bobs of admin so hi and uh, yeah we're we'll back with a regular podcast episode and uh, yeah, I shall see you soon. Bye-bye.